Robert Regent has left his Paris laboratory and no one knows where he has gone. Leon Dufresne, Frank Chandler's chief agent in Paris, has been rescued from an old house where he was held prisoner, but is still unconscious. Princess Nadja has seen the sinister Dimitri on the street and has returned to the hotel to tell Chandler. Dorothy answers the telephone. Her husband is calling. He gives her a message for Chandler. She cries out, Robert, Robert, where are you? There is no reply. Chandu, the magician. Robert, Robert. Hello, hello. No, operator. Let me talk to her, Dorothy. Listen, operator, trace that call, will you? The call just made to this room. Hurry, please. What did he say? Oh, I could hardly hear him. He sounded so faint and far away. I wonder if he could be ill or... Probably not. You know how these telephones are over here. But well, what did he say? I'm trying to remember exactly. At first, I couldn't hear him at all. And then he said, I have only a moment, Dorothy. Can you hear me? And I said, yes, yes. And then he said, tell Frank. And then his voice seemed to die away for a moment, so I couldn't hear him at all. But then he said something about his experiment being successful. Did he say it was successful? Or it was not successful. I thought he said it was successful. He said to tell you to communicate with Pierre Roger of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. thought that's what he said. Oh, where do you suppose he can be? Pierre Roger? Why, is he no, he's no longer connected with the Foreign Office. I read about him in the paper myself before we left home. I remember we talked about it in modern history. Was he the one they discovered his sole government secret to the Russians? Yes. But Robert wouldn't have anything to do with a man like that, Frank. Robert evidently believes Roger is still connected with the Foreign Office. But, John Do, you do not believe that Roger is in the employ of Russia now? No. But his transactions with Russia have branded him for the rest of his life. I've seen his kind in Europe before. They do one crooked thing and then live miserable lives forever after, picking like scavengers at whatever secrets they can unearth and selling them to anyone they can find. What are we going to do, Frank? I'm going to that gem cutter's where Nadia saw Dimitri. I may pick up some information there. In the meantime, Robert may telephone again. I'm sure he will. If he heard you say you didn't understand where he was. Yeah, if he's not shut up somewhere. Bob, stop. And isn't there anything I can do? No, Doc. Just be sure there's someone here to answer the telephones all the time. If they succeed in tracing that call, we'll learn where Robert is. Well, can I go with you to the place where Nadia saw Dimitri, Uncle Frank? No, Bob. I'm expecting Lupu here any moment. And I'll take him with me. I hope that man that killed his brother has left the cafe. What cafe? What do you mean, Mother? Oh, dear. I forgot you and Betty didn't know about that. The waiter who served us at the Cave Viennois the other night was the man who killed Lupu's brother. He uh -huh. was? Did he know you, Uncle Frank? Oh, it's Robert again. Hello? Oh, yes. Just a moment. He's right here. It's for you, Frank. Hello? Oh, yes. I'm glad you called. Where are you now? Yes? No, well, that's all right. Will you go to the Café de la Paix? I'll meet you there in a few minutes. Yes. I will, eh? Well, you can tell me when you see me. Goodbye. It was Lupu. I hope it really was Lupu, Uncle Frank. Yes, indeed. Well, of course it was. Don't you suppose I know Lupu's voice? Well, with all the phony letters and telephone calls that have been going around between Father and Mr. Dufresne and whatnot, I wouldn't be too sure. Well, nothing much can happen to me in broad daylight at the Café de la Paix at any rate. Oh, Frank... Why don't you let Bob walk down there with you? If it really isn't Lupu, Bob... Dorothy, you certainly are at suggesting I take Bob along for a bodyguard. Oh, you know I don't mean that, Frank. But with all these things that have happened, and even now we don't know where Robert is. I only mean that Bob could call the police or something. Please let him go with you. You can come right back here. Dorothy, I never saw you like this. You mustn't let your nerve get the better of you. Oh, Frank, please. But what could possibly happen? Oh, the man might not be Lupo at all. The man who telephoned. But don't you think that I... No. Why do you not permit Bob to go with you? Dorothy will make herself sick with anxiety. Don't let him go. Perhaps you're right. Very well, Dorothy. Come on, Bob. Okay, wait till I get my hat. I'll be right back, Mother. Here we are. 
Why do you suppose we don't have any places like this at home where you sit out on the sidewalk to eat, Uncle Frank? I don't know. I wonder where Lupu is. He's had time to get here, I should think. We'll sit down here where he can see us easily when he comes up. Two coffees, please. Oui, monsieur. Merci. Did you ever see anything like the way those taxi cabs dash around? They look as though they'd rather run you. I think this is keen. I hope Mother won't be worried because I don't come right back. As long as I promised her I'd let you come along to see that it's really Lupu who meets me, I think you'd better wait till he comes. Yeah, I... Why, Bobby Regan, imagine seeing you right here in Paris, and I might have missed you all together if I hadn't just happened to go down to Cody's to get some perfume from Mother. I never would have seen you at all. Can you imagine seeing you right here? <laughs> Judy, for Pete's sake. How do you do, Miss Allen? Oh, Mr. Taylor, I tried all sorts of ways to get up to Montevania, but they wouldn't let me. I tried to tell them I knew you, but it didn't make a dent on them. Can you beat that? For heaven's sake, sit down. Yes, do, Miss Allen. Oh, why don't you call me Judy? Everybody calls me Judy. Say, everybody's looking at you. Oh, I'm so glad to see you again, Bobby. I began to think I never would. What have you been doing up in that funny old country where they won't let anybody in? What are you doing here now? I hope you're going to stay a long time. Oh, look out there. Isn't that the funniest little thing you're out there in the street? Bob, you'll have to take her away somewhere. Everyone who comes along will stare at me. I'm trying to be as inconspicuous as possible. Well, gee, where will I take her? There's a tea shop down on the next block. Take her down there and get some tea and cakes or something. Well, gee, Uncle Frank, I sure hate to be left alone with her. She's terrible. I'll do it, though, I suppose. Say, Judy. Huh? Uh, Uncle Frank thinks it's not so good for you to sit here like this. Uh, he thinks we should go down to a tea shop in the next block. Oh, and... Bobby, I just love it. It's the first time you've ever asked me to go out with you. Oh, so surreal. <laughs> well, come on. So long, Uncle Frank. Mm -hmm. You better telephone your mother. Okay. Come on, Judy. John Lou, you have waited a long time? No, Luke, well, not long. I'll pay for this coffee and then we can go. Where is this we are to go, Chandu? Princess Nadia saw Dimitri go into a small gem cutter shop on the Rue de la Chaussée d'Antin. The street cuts in behind the opera, only half a block from here. But it is then around this corner? Yes, just a little way. Nadia said it was only two doors from the corner. Ah, there it is. I am glad I have not forgot my sharp knife, Chandu. What a place for a trap. And if we are caught, we can't be accused of robbery. Well, here we are. Let's go in. Good afternoon. Buenos dias, senor. Why, you're Spanish. Where's the man who runs this shop? What is it you wish? I would like to see a ruby. I'm returning to America and wish to buy a jewel as a gift. The rubies I have are very fine, not very fine, senor. Nevertheless, I should like to see one. I have one here. You see it? Oh, yes. Uh, by the way, are any of the others in the inner room? I do not know what you mean, senor. I said, are there any of the others in the inner room? Look out, Shondo. This place is a trap. I know it. This man does not belong. I will ask you one question, senor. What is the time? And I will answer by saying, the clock strikes five. Ah, you have not come to look at my rubies, then. I have thought you were of the police. Come with me, if you'll be so kind. Did you say any of the others are there now? No, senor. At the moment, there are not. But all who know the word are to be admitted and not to wait. I understand. I'll wait here. Quick, Lupo. We'll have a look around. The air in here is stifling. See if there's a window we can open. It is like the cave of an animal, Chondo. Yes. Those candles are burning what little air there is in here. These chairs against the wall look as though many men came here to meet, eh, Chondo? Yes. I hold my breath and keep my sharp knife tightly in my hand when you say to him, the clock strikes five, Chondo. It was just luck. I know you say it is, but I have seen many things you do which seem like good fortune, but which are more. Look here. Look on this little table. Ah, they are white cards. No, just slips of paper. And look what kind of paper it is. The same as the message in the statue. Yes, and each one has the Roman numeral V on it. I wonder what that means. 
Oh, I see. It means five. Look who you see. These are tickets of admission to this room. V. The clock strikes five. And there's another meaning. Oh, why didn't I guess it before? Now I see what the yogi meant by that message. Do not be deceived by the appearance of death. The appearance of death. What does it, John, do? Listen. I hear voices. Rupu, some of them may recognize my voice. Ask the question. What time is it? As you say, Chandu. Gentlemen, what is the time? The clock strikes. 